Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets, and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got what I think is one of the biggest stories of the year for me. So, the article states, Google, Facebook, Twitter face class action lawsuit for banning crypto ads. And I'm going to tell you right now, I do a lot of different advertising for my businesses, and I can tell you that if this ban wasn't put in place, cryptocurrency and digital assets would be light years ahead of where it is right now. So the repercussions for this are enormous. Also, this is a follow up on a hit piece that was put out a couple days ago about Chainlink. And it states Zeus Capital confirms it never produced research about Chainlink. So the question is asked, who was behind it? And it's going to uncover a lot of clues about what's going on and why I can tell you right now, I am more bullish on Chainlink than I ever was. And also, we'll take a look at the scam of the day, which we'll do at the very end of this video. But first, let me say thanks. I want to say thanks to all my supporters. So everybody, I'll just do a random shout out from All Right Soft, George McNamara, who do we got? Theodore Leva, uh, Rama Flash, that's a good one, and Stephen H Hewlett. So if you don't know, there's a join now button underneath, just a couple bucks, and uh, it's just uh, like a show of support. But thanks everybody who's uh, been a member so far. Really appreciate it. Let's take a look at what's going on in today's market. So today is July 21st, it's about 1.30 Texas time, and it looks like uh, Bitcoin is holding pretty strong, almost 9,400, 93.57, so pretty nice. Up 2.2%, I like to see that. Ethereum is up big too. Uh, getting past that 244 to 245, I'm happy. Tether's Tether, XRP, 19 cents, watch out. Bitcoin Cash, uh, yeah. Cardano, looking at 12 cents, I like to see that, up 4%. Everything's up today, this is a pretty good day, except for Chainlink, down a little bit. Hey, you can't keep going up forever, but uh, man, it had a massive run. I think it was at $8.64, now it's at uh, 7.12, so hey, what are you gonna do? That's crypto. And then Tezos also a big winner today, 7.9%, and uh, ooh, VeChain up again. So yeah, it looks like a pretty good day. So let's break into this huge news that, I mean, one of the, one of the news that I think is actually uh, astronomical. So first up, Google, Facebook, Twitter face class action lawsuit for banning crypto ads. Very interesting. When I saw this, I was like, well, this looks pretty interesting. I wonder to see exactly how deep it goes. And as I was reading the whole thing, I began to think about like what could have been if it wasn't for this banning. But I got to tell you, I think everything's going to become entangled with this lawsuit. So cryptocurrency businesses are taking Google, Facebook, and Twitter to court and class action lawsuit. That could cost the social media giants 300 billion dollars look i don't care how much money you got 300 billion dollars is a huge hit to the wallet book so if you're going to go into a lawsuit and you are these enormous conglomerates you're going to be sweating and there's a good reason for that anyhow the plaintiffs claim that their businesses have been harmed when the three social media giants all banned cryptocurrency advertising in 2018 within weeks of each other and i can tell you in 2017 you used to be able to see cryptocurrency ads on Facebook. Actually, they were everywhere. Uh, there was one guy, James L. Tucher, who I actually signed up for on, on his newsletter, which is way overpriced. I don't recommend that one at all. But uh, uh, let me tell you, I mean, it was everywhere. You could find it everywhere. Uh, Google AdWords, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube videos. I mean, you could, you could not turn on and get a video without seeing that guy's face. And uh, all of a sudden, from one day to the next, boom, gone. And uh, this just was a blanket wide ban and everything was gone. It was amazing. Anyhow, there was a little caveat, which is Google reversed the ban for regulated exchanges in Japan and in the US in September 2018. And that's why you'll see ads for like eToro all over the place with Alec Baldwin uh, hawking the whole thing. And it's a pretty good ad. I, I must admit, it's, uh, it's really well done, very slick. I wish their customer service was as good as their advertising department. But uh, hey, that is what it is. But uh, yeah, you'll see those things all over the place. Anyhow, however, the plaintiffs argued that there were not many regulated exchanges at the time. And this is actually being brought forth by an Australian um, law firm. And they state, this class action will seek damages for worldwide losses of crypto industry members and investors. The announcements of the crypto ad ban by the respondents dropped crypto markets by hundreds of billions of dollars. Crypto exchange volumes also dropped by 60 to 90%. And I can tell you, um, 
advertising and marketing is the lifeblood of any type of industry that you're in. And that's just how it is. So to illustrate my point, and you probably have already heard this, but I'll say it again. Uh, what's the best hamburger uh, in your city? I don't know where you live. I have no idea. Uh, I don't know if you're in Canada or any parts of Europe or Australia or wherever else. Not India. I did learn my lesson on that one. But I mean, throughout the whole world, I don't know where you're at. But what is the best hamburger in your city? Is that is it that burger joint down the street? I can tell you right now, I don't really uh, know where you live, but I can tell you the best hamburger is McDonald's. And the reason why it's McDonald's is because they are everywhere. And their advertising and marketing campaigns are so strong and so strung out for, you know, uh, just uh, just huge amounts of space that you cannot escape it. And even though their their food is debatable, I mean, I think it's delicious, but I know it's not good for you. But uh, I will just say this. Um, it doesn't matter if it's good or bad. They have billions upon billions of people served, and they're able to get them in. And how they do it? With marketing and advertising. So moving on. The law firm is seeking more claimants to join the lawsuit. Anyone worldwide who was adversely affected by the crypto ad ban announcements has a claim and can join the class action lawsuits. They include anyone holding cryptocurrency in 2018 from January 28th to December 31st or later in limited cases. So I don't know if that if you fall in that category, but I certainly do. I have been holding cryptocurrency uh, around that time, so I could be a part of this class action lawsuit, <laughs> which is pretty amazing to think about. Um, and then it goes on and says, persons holding a, a Steam or Hive cryptocurrency on chain wallet at any time also qualify, as are Mount Gox creditors and owners of crypto businesses, exchanges, wall providers, ICO projects, miners, and advisors. So if you take the enormity of all those people that were just mentioned in this class action lawsuit, do you see how $300 billion is actually paltry to what it could actually bloom out to be? I mean, this is this is an enormous uh, lawsuit that could just be, um, I mean, it, it could just blow up to like the biggest thing ever. And uh, I can tell you right now, if it didn't come to this, if it didn't come to a class action lawsuit, if these social media outlets would have said, you know what? We believe in free speech. We believe in advertisers to come in. We'll handle it accordingly, like we always have. And they allowed uh, these different organizations, uh, these wallets, the ICO products, the miners, the, the provider action, everybody just to come in and still be able to advertise. I I tend to believe that we would be much farther along uh, for cryptocurrency digital assets, as far as mass adoption and people just knowing about it. I mean, if you had no, if you have no outlet for advertising and marketing, I mean, what are you going to do? You know, it's word of mouth. That's it takes a long time. So I think that if this didn't happen, we would be much, much farther ahead. And I can definitely see the rationale as to why they're putting together this class action lawsuit because a lot of people were affected. Now. I think moving forward, uh, this could be, uh, you know, hugely detrimental uh, to uh, Facebook and YouTube and Google AdWords and everything else. Lastly, I'll say this. YouTube and the rest of these companies, they need to watch out because with uh, these big, enormous lawsuits like this coming at them, and this is just the first, I don't see this stopping. Uh, plus the lawsuit being brought forth uh, by Ripple, which Ripple said, hey, you didn't do enough to protect your community and you keep using our CEO's likeness or allowing our CEO's likeness uh, to be used in these scam videos, which uh, that is one of your terms and conditions. Uh, you are supposed to regulate that and you did not do that. So we're going to sue the pants off you. And they're going through the litigation process right now. They have that lawsuit going on. They have this new lawsuit going on. And who knows what's going to happen uh, later on. I can only see uh, not great things uh, for this platform moving forward. And even if you, let me tell you, I've been sued before. Even if you win a lawsuit, you don't win a lawsuit. Everybody loses because you're going to have to pay enormous lo lawyer fees. And I can only imagine lawyer fees for YouTube and Google and everybody else. That's going to be uh, unbelievable. Anyhow, but I will I will also say this, and that is that with Brad Garlinghouse, when Ripple came into the fray and said, hey, you need to stop doing this. Has anybody seen a Brad Garlinghouse video or Ripple video where he's being used in a scammer's video to try to do an asymmetrical giveaway where he's going to say, hey, give us 10 XRP, we'll send you 1,000 XRP. I haven't seen anybody. I see Elon Musk. I see Bill Gates. I see... Charles Hoskinson. I mean, you name it, I see it. And the only people I see right now are the people who are not suing YouTube. 
So uh, maybe everybody should just get together and say, hey, I like what Ripple's doing over there because uh, what they did is they stopped YouTube uh, or actually maybe kicked them in the pants and made them start having to actually look at the ads that are being put out there and they're not damaging the reputation of Ripple's company. Maybe uh, us at Microsoft, maybe us at Tesla, maybe us at Cardano need to do that before our brand gets taken through the mud. So we should actually start to do these types of things as well. Maybe we should get in the fray and get our legal team on it. Just saying. I'm not a legal expert, so but I'm just saying that's probably what I would do. Anyhow, and then lastly, I will say this, uh, YouTube, um, we try to fight the scams and everything else, which we'll do later, but uh, there's a theory that people say, you know, they say, well, we believe that YouTube runs the scams. And that's, I, I see it all the time in the comment section. I read all the comments and everything from good to bad. Everything from I'm a genius to I'm an idiot. And uh, everybody's right <laughs> in some way, shape or form. I'm kind of like right in the middle, right? Um, but I will say that uh, I don't think, I, I think it would be incredibly idiotic for YouTube to engage in, in scams because if they, let's say it did come out, it came out that they were the ones that were perpetrating these scams to discredit cryptocurrency digital assets. Can you imagine the blowback, not just on, on the public front, but on the legal front as far as like all these different lawsuits. I mean, they've already got two in front of them. I can you imagine one coming back? I just don't see it. Anyhow, uh, that's all I got for this one, but I think it's gonna be big. We'll do some follow-ups, let's move on. Next up, Zeus Capital confirms it never produced research about Chainlink, so who was behind it? So this was a, an article that actually kind of went under the radar for me. I know some other people had reported it, I just, I just missed it. But uh, apparently there was some kind of hit piece that came about uh, that was some document, 40-some pages, and just pretty much said that Chainlink was an enormous scam. So the article states, UK-based Zeus Capital Limited has published a statement denying its involvement in creating the controversial report about Chainlink. And they say, for the avoidance of doubt, we'd like to state that Zeus Capital Limited has not produced or published research on this subject and has no relationship or affiliation with Zeus Capital LLP whatsoever. So apparently, Zeus Capital LLP, they did a, you know, it looks like a 59-page uh, piece on them on Chainlink and pretty much called it a huge scam. So uh, Zeus Capital uh, states, hey, we're not a part of Zeus Capital LLP. Great. So who is Zeus Capital uh, LLP? Last week, uh, Zeus Capital caused a stir by releasing and actively promoting the 59-page hit piece which dissects Chainlink's presumed fraud while predicting that Link would collapse 99%. That's pretty ballsy. Um, later on, it's on the article, it states here that Bitcoin maximalist Tone Vase praised the quality of the report, claiming that it must have taken months to conduct this kind of re thorough research. So I'm not going to uh, pile on Tone Vase because, I mean, look, I mean, when you hear something that you want to hear, usually you have this cognitive bias. You're like, I like that, so I'm going to go with that. Maybe you didn't really do the research and all that stuff. But there is one thing about this, and I like to uh, make mention, is that Bitcoin maximalists are right for what they are talking about, but they're wrong over everything. And this comes, this comes back to a video we did a couple weeks ago. It uh, featured Max Kaiser. And he was just talking about how Bitcoin was the only coin. Everything else is, is an S coin. Uh, every All altcoin is going to zero. Bitcoin is going to be awesome. And after watching that entire uh, episode, that interview, I realized what the maximalists are all about. Because when they got into it, cryptocurrency or Bitcoin was cryptocurrency. It is the currency. And when they got into it, they thought, okay, this is the only thing that um, digital ledger technology or distributed ledger technology DLT blockchain is going to be used for, which is cryptocurrency. And in that regard, uh, Bitcoin still failed because it's not going to be used as a currency. It's going to be used as a uh, store of value. But so now everybody's on the store of value kick. And in that case, they are right. Bitcoin will be a great store of value. So in their mind, they just have the horse blinders on. That's all they can see, right? But I'm here to tell you, my friend, and that is that uh, there is no way on God's green earth, that Bitcoin can do everything. Bitcoin cannot be for smart contracts. Bitcoin cannot be for chain supply analysis. Bitcoin cannot be for voting. Bitcoin cannot be for healthcare. Bitcoin cannot be for every single thing that the blockchain can do because the network cannot support that. It is impossible. 
possible. So all these different um, projects that are out there, uh, oracles like Chainlink, Bitcoin can't do that. So don't, I, I, I just, I understand why they say it, but they really need to upgrade their hardware and just realize what's going on. Uh, this is a bigger thing than just uh, what was a currency 11 years ago. Anyhow, so moving on. States eagle-eyed link marines noticing Nexo's trail in the hole in Broglio. That's a good word. The chain link community accused the popular crypto lending platform, which is Nexo, of attempting to manipulate the link market with a dubious report by impersonating the legit asset management firm. This came right after Nexo allegedly shorted 350,000 link tokens borrowed with DeFi protocol AVE. Let me read that again. This came right after Nexo allegedly, allegedly shorted 350,000 link tokens borrowed with DeFi protocol. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Do you think that's a real thing? Do you have any updates on that? Because if it's true, it's very damning for Nexo. I will be severely disappointed. Who would have thought that people would be greedy? Lastly, it states, all these allegations were vehemently denied by Nexo co-founder Antony Trenchev, who insisted that his team was in touch with the cryptocurrency's co-founder, Sergey Nazarov. And the only one that can answer that question would be Sergey. I'd love to know the answer to that. And before I forget, check out Crazy for Cryptos. He did a great video on this whole pit, this whole uh, hit piece called, uh, it was the uh, Zeus Capital Chainlink Fraud Exposed. And he said the same thing I did. He's like, look, if someone's out there and they're shorting Chainlink, well, they're they're saying, hey, this is a this is a big thing, and uh, we need to to get get in front of it. And they try to like mess up the whole operation. Then of course you'd be a little bit more uh, bullish. So definitely check out uh, Crazy for Crypto's video. Fantastic stuff. Again, let me know what you think in the comment section. And that is it for today's video. So I want to say thanks for uh, sticking with me. That first article I think was like uh, you know explosive. I cannot wait to see what's going to happen with that. And if you got a couple minutes, uh, stick with me. We're going to go over Scam of the Day to help out the community. All right, so Scam of the Day. So first of all, why do we do this? We do this because I was sick and tired of people getting screwed out of their money. And uh, I just added something new today, which was a report from Whale Alert, which talks about how YouTube <laughs> helps scammers steal 130000 in Bitcoin from investors daily. And it's been uh, millions so far in 2020. And you can take a look at the article, which is here. Um, and you can check it out, but it's just very damning because this is from, you know, whale alert. If you're on Twitter, you can see all the different movements. I don't know if they're, they're still active right now because of different, uh, things that happen with the hack of Twitter, but whale alerts got a lot of great data. And one of the data points that they pulled out was, Hey, scammers have taken 24 million during the first six months of 2020 and all from these stupid little scams uh, that are just going forth. So remember, uh, not everybody's as savvy as you. They don't know what's going on. They're just, everybody's new is going to fall into this space. And they're like, wow, is this how it works? Great. So I can give one Ethereum, I get two. That sounds like an airdrop. I don't know what an airdrop is. I heard it. Maybe that's what it is. And they just put their money in. You got to understand people aren't as advanced as you are. So what do we do? We protect those people. How do we do that? Well, in the description, every one of my video, scroll down, it looks like this. And when you click on that, it's gonna take you to this handy dandy scam of the day spreadsheet. Just scroll all the way down and we're gonna try to get rid of some scams. So uh, this last one, all you gotta do is just click on here. Let's see what we got. Hey, this is a nice one. Look at this. This is from uh, B-Chain Foundation, 500 million vet giveaway. Wow, check that out. So uh, first of all, there's already been 10,000 views. That's pretty good. And they streamed live on July 16th. So 10,000 views, maybe somebody fell for it. Maybe somebody didn't, don't know. Doesn't matter. We need to get rid of it. But first we need to do a little investigation. So first of all, let's take a look at what is being said here in the comment section. And again, it just says hackers, hackers. Some things in Spanish, not many people. Must oh man. But uh, this was... And this is the problem. It says here, you hacked the channel of Easy Paint with Biswanath, unsubscribing. This is again some Chinese scam. So I'm gonna tell you how this all works. Um, when you look at this, and you see there's 109,000 subscribers. So some YouTuber uh, put a lot of work into getting those subscribers. And what they do is these hackers, they contact YouTubers and they say, hey, you wanna be a partner? Okay, great, open up this document and sign it. And then they 
use a keystroke or some type of malware and they're able to get into their YouTube account and they just delete all the videos, they change everything and they put their own videos on there, which kind of sucks, which gives it the legitimacy with that 109,000 subscribers, you're like, oh, look at all the subscribers, fantastic. But in reality, it was some other person that worked super hard to build all these subscribers and they screwed them. And not only that, they're trying to screw you too by taking your hard earned money. Not yours, but I mean someone else's, which is, just sucks. So there's that. Um, that's what I would say. But really, what we're looking for, we have to do our investigation, right? We're looking for this. Um, Asymmetrical giveaways. It says, if you send 50,000 V chain, you'll receive 100,000 back. If you send 150, so this is asymmetrical. No one's giving you free money. Uh, no one likes you that much. Maybe your mom. I'm not sure. But re in reality, you're not going to get free money. So just get that out of the way. So the best way to treat everything is everything is a scam until proven otherwise. Let me say that again. Everything is a scam unless proven otherwise. So what do we do here? Well, first things first, we're going to downvote. And then we're going to click on these three little dots right here and we're going to report. And what we're going to say, we're going to say, hey, this is spam. We're going to choose one. Say this is a scam and fraud. And click next. We're going to say, hey, this is a scam. And whatever else you want to say. And off you go and just report. And look, it only takes, I mean, just to look at this real quick and then downvote and click those three dots, it takes like 20 seconds. So if you could do that, uh, it'd be much appreciated. I want to say thanks to Crypto Wolf for giving uh, or bring this to my attention. So hopefully we can take this down rather quickly. All right. So uh, that's it for today. I want to say thanks again and I really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.